Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at the major financial statements, which are the income statement, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flows. The reason I'm going over those financial statements because in the next session, we would look at financial statement analysis. So when we prepare analysis, we rely on the income statement, on the balance sheet, on the statement of cash flows. Therefore, you have to understand what does the income statement represent? What does the balance sheet represent? What does the statement of cash flow represent? In this session, I will give you an overview about these statements. In other words, those financial statements are already completed. If you really want to learn how to prepare financial statements, please go to my accounting courses like financial accounting or intermediate accounting. This is a finance course. In a finance course, you are dealing with, with an already completed financial statement. And this is what I do today to help you explain the material. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. Subscribe to my website where I have plenty of courses in finance, accounting, tax, and audit. Like my lectures and share them with others. And again, on my website, you will find additional information, especially if you are studying for your CPA exam, whether you are studying for your CPA or taking accounting or finance courses, you will find additional supplementary material. And if you are a CPA candidate, you want to check out how does your university stand vis-a-vis -vis the CPA exam score, because this is going to give you an idea about the rigor of your accounting program. And this information is available on my website. So let's go ahead and start with the income statement. What is the income statement? So simply put, when you think of the income statement, think of the profitability of the company. It summarizes the profit of the firm over a period of time, such as a year or a quarter or, or a half a year. So the income statement shows you how well you did over a period in time. That's important. Simply put, the simplest way to explain the finance, the income statement, it's the difference between your revenues and your expenses, what you generated from your work and what expenditure you incurred cost to run the business. And the business incur four types of four types of expenses. And we're going to go over the expenses. Now, bear in mind that the business could also have more than one type of revenues. They could have, for example, sales revenues, interest revenue, dividend revenue, rental revenue. The different businesses will have different type of revenues. But the expenses, definitely they will have many expenses and they are broken down into four categories. And for each financial statement, we would look at a sample and we're going to look at the Home Depot financial statements because it's easier for students to relate to Home Depot because it's an easy business to understand its operation. So it so the expenses are broken into four categories. The first one, and very important, is cost of goods sold, which is the direct cost attributable to producing the product sold by the firm. For example, for Home Depot, cost of goods sold is what they purchase because Home Depot is technically a retailer. They purchase items, they turn around and they sell them for a profit. So the cost of goods sold is the purchase of those items, the cost of those items that they sold. Then they have general and administrative expenses. Correspond to overhead expenses like salaries, advertising, and other costs to operate the business that are not that are not directly attributable to production. You need to run the business. You need employees. You need to advertise. You need to pay um, uh, heating uh, air conditioning, so on and so forth. Those are the general and administrative expenses. Then you have the third category, which is interest expense. And this is listed separately because of the importance of financing your business, because you can finance your business through debt or through equity. So if you're relying on interest, we want to see this number separately stated on the income statement. And taxes is important, which is what is your taxes on earnings owed to the federal and local government? How much taxes are you paying on your earning. So those are the four different categories of expenses. And let's take a look at Home Depot financial statement. Here we have net sales. And to arrive to net sales, simply put, this is net sales. What happened is you have sales and you deducted from sales returns. You deducted, you deducted from sales allowances. You deducted from sales discounts. Those are all deducted until you come to net sales. So we have net sales. Then we have operating expenses. And their operating expenses, cost of goods sold. And for a company like Home Depot, cost of goods sold is a large 
number because that's their largest expense because that's what they do. They sell stuff. Then we have selling general and administrative. This is to run the business. We have other expenses. And to know what the other expenses are, you'll have to read the notes and the financial statements. And we have depreciated, depreciation listed separately. Now, this financial statement is, is prepared for finance majors. But in the real world, uh, not in the real world, in the accounting, will you will have net sales minus cost of goods sold, gives you gross profit. So it will be designed a little bit differently. But this is designed for our use, which is our use is to analyze the company. Then we have a number called EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes. This is a number, this is an important number, EBIT. We're going to see this later on when we do financial statement analysis. Then we have interest expense, then we have taxable income, then we have taxes. Now we arrived at just EB, earnings, not before anything, right? So earnings after taxes and interest, net income. Okay, and this is net income and this is in million. So you have to add six zero seven point nine billion. This is how much dividend they paid. And this is what they kept, I guess, additions to retained earnings, what they kept. So this is basically a typical income. I would, I would not say this is a typical. This is an income statement that's that is prepared for a finance student to understand the income statement. Now, in addition to the raw numbers, the dollar amount, when you're analyzing a company, it's very important to see the weight of each number in, uh, compared to a certain figure on the financial statement. For income statement, we use sales. We compare everything to sales. For example, here we, we know that percent of revenue, cost of goods sold represent 65%, more than half, almost two-third, not two-third, but almost two-third of uh, of the of the cost to operate the business is cost of goods sold. This is called common size income statement. Why do we call this a common size income statement? Because I don't know how large is Home Depot. If I want to compare Home Depot to Lowe's, well, I need to know what is the percentage of their cost of goods sold vis-a-vis -vis sales. It doesn't matter whether Home Depot sells in million or billions or Kohl's sells in millions or hundreds of thousands. Once I compute the percentage, I can compare the two the two company based on the percentage so home depot they incur 65.8 percent for that particular period of their sales and cost of goods sold selling and selling general and administrative 16 other 1.9 really not material depreciation 2.9 total operating expenses is 85 their earning before interest and taxes is 14.2 now i can compare this 14.2 to lowe's earnings before interest and taxes only using percentages to know which company is making is making more profit per dollar amount then their interest expense is you know approximately one percent Again, I can compare this to Lowe's. Their taxes represent 48% of their cost. I can compare this to Lowe's. This is what we called um, common size, basically putting everything in percentages so we can compare. Now, also what we have to understand is cash versus net income. The income statement gives us net income. Net income is an accrual figure. Accrual means it's not cash. It's based on accounting figures. This means net income is accounting earning. It's affected by conventions that we use in accounting. So the way we account for inventories, for example, Home Depot could account for the inventory different than Lowe's. One could be using what we call FIFO, first in, first out. The other could be using LIFO. That's one example of a difference. Also, the way they book depreciation expense, the way they book this figure. For example, one company could be using the straight line. The other company could be using what's called the sums of years digit. It makes a difference of in the numbers. But if you're a financial analyst, you have to understand those differences. You have to understand accounting and make appropriate adjustment. Also, the way they, they account for sales, it could differ how they account for contracts. A lot of things could differ. So what's, what's important about the income statement is to understand if the earning is sustainable. What does it, what does it mean sustainable? If the earning is repeating. And for a company like Home Depot, it's easy to understand this because Home Depot don't have, let's call this com complicated operations. They don't buy other companies that's not in their business. They don't discontinue large divisions. Basically, they're in the business of selling home improvement products. So the, their earnings is sustainable. But also, we want to look at their earning to find out if they're selling more in, in terms of number of units or are they increasing prices because of inflation. So also, we have to look at the numbers and analyze the numbers themselves versus transitory figures. Transitory means 
um, sales that they make one time and they don't they no longer have that sale for example let's assume home depot a local government or a state government contracted home depot to supply them for a large project and as a result the revenue went up by 10 percent well this was a one-year event it's not every year that a state government is gonna agree to buy from home depot supplies therefore it's we have to understand if they have any large clients and those large clients are they repetitive or are they transitory because that's important to to understand the growth how is the company growing because if i account that there's a 10 percent increase in sales and i say well this 10 percent is if this is the growth remember the g in the formula when we compute the dividend discount model or the cash cash flow model well if we say G is 10% and G does not repeat, then that's not that's not really true. Then we are computing the wrong value for the company. So the financial statement clearly convey considerable information. And a proof of that is the stock prices respond to when company reports earnings. So if you are watching earnings and today is Wednesday, October the... October what? October the 27th? Yes, tomorrow, for example, Apple and Amazon are reporting. And I can assure you, when Amazon and Apple reports their figures, when they report their earnings, the stock price will move. Therefore, financial statements are important. So what's gonna, what they're going to be reporting is their net income and their earnings per share EPS. Basically, net income uh, earnings per share derives from earnings earnings per share derives from net income, which we'll talk about in the next session. So this is basically an overview overview of the income statement. So what we look for is how much profit they made versus what is the profit that they kept, not kept, the profit that they, you know, how much sales minus all these, how much did they keep in profit? Then from the profit, they're going to pay some of it in dividend. For example, they pay some of it in dividend, a little bit than less, and they keep the other part. The balance sheet, again, but I, before I proceed, please don't think this is the only thing about the income statement. This is what you need as a finance, finance students. Now, if you're an accounting major, if you go to my intermediate accounting course, just go to farhatlectures.com to my website, you will find more. We have discontinued operation. We have unusual gains and losses, but we don't get into those items, which are called transitory items transitory items here. You just need to understand the basic financial statements. The second financial statement is the balance sheet. The income statement provide measure of profitability, if we are profitable or not. A balance sheet is basically a list of information about a company's assets, liabilities, and equity, which is basically a snapshot, basically a list of things. And it's for a particular time. Particular time means one point in time. It's on a particular date. This is what we mean by that. So the balance sheet lists the firm's assets, liabilities at a particular moment. Assets is what they have, what resources they have to run the company. Liabilities is that, how much debt do they have? The difference between those two, the difference between assets and liabilities. So if the company have $10 in asset, $7 in liabilities, we say equity is $3. Equity is how much is the company worth? So if you take all your assets, pay off your liabilities. You have $10 of assets, pay off your liabilities, $7. What's left is the stockholder's equity or shareholder's equity. This is what the owners of the company is worth. Like the income statement, the presentation of the balance sheet is pretty standardized. I would say more standardized than the income statement because on the income statement, you always have some transitory items, items that don't repeat that you have to report separately. But let's take a look at the balance sheet. The balance sheet is so we're going to have an ass. Here are all the assets. This is the liability section and this is the equity section. So I'm going to cover each topic separately. So when I cover a topic, I'm going to focus on that. First, starting with the balance sheet specifically, we're going to look at current assets. And these are the current assets. What are the current assets? Current assets are assets that you're going to be used or convert to cash or consume within one year. For example, cash is obviously and marketable securities, which is short-term investments, they're going to be converted into cash. Receivable. If you sell on account, you're going to have um, you're going to have receivable, which are considered current assets because you convert to cash within one year. Inventories. Obviously, it's going to be converted with, within one year, or that's your intent. And you might have other current assets like prepaid supplies. So those are your current assets. It's what you have in assets to run the company in the near future. Those are listed first according to the US gap. They are listed first. After current assets, we have 
fixed asset or long-term assets. Sometimes we call them long-term assets. And under long-term assets, we have assets that serve the company for many years, mainly uh, tangible assets, fixed asset, assets that you can touch like property, plant, and equipment, other long-term assets as well, as well as in the total tangible asset, we have the total tangible asset is 23 billion for Home Depot. So this is what comes next. Then what comes after the tangible assets are the intangible assets like contract value, customer list, copyright, so on and so forth, including something that we call goodwill. So goodwill is listed on the balance sheet and Home Depot has approximately two billion of goodwill. Goodwill is when Home Depot buys another company and they pay more than its fair value. It's when you pay more than what something is worth, well, you paid for everything that's worth, but you paid extra. The extra that you pay is maybe for its location, for its management, for its research. Therefore, you are paying some extra uh, amount. It's called goodwill. So you record this as goodwill. So this occur when you purchase another company and you pay extra for it. Okay. Also, also for assets, what we can do, we can show them as a common size as a relationship to total assets. So here what we have is we have cash in relationship to total asset, receivable in relationship to total asset. So notice for a company like Home Depot, inventories and their tangible assets, their property, plant and equipment and building represent, if we take 53 plus approximately 30, so 30 plus 53 is approximately 83 to 84% of Home Depot assets are tied up in inventory and property, plant and equipment. And this should make sense because that's the business that Home Depot is in. They sell product, they have inventory and to sell the product they need warehouses they need parking lot they need they need the, they need place to store their inventory therefore they have a lot of property plant and equipment now we're done with assets and these are home depot resources assets they go on the balance sheet on the other side we have current uh, we have liabilities and liabilities are divided into current liabilities current liabilities and long-term liabilities long-term liabilities what current liabilities are listed first current liabilities are liabilities that that we have to pay within one year they usually include uh, accounts payable when home depot buys stuff on account and they do buy a lot of stuff on account obviously because they buy inventory from from manufacturers and suppliers therefore they give them some time to pay uh, for example if they owe any taxes if they owe any payroll liabilities if they owe any small accrued expenses expenses that are not yet paid those are considered current liabilities and current liabilities represent 32 percent of their liabilities and equity which is the same thing as assets represent you know 30 percent of their liabilities are due within one year current liabilities now Long-term liabilities, they represent here, they are, uh, they represent 52% long-term liabilities. They have other loans that are long-term, long-term. So together, liabilities represent 89 or almost 90% of their assets between current and long-term. Now, eventually, we're going to be running some ratios that compare those that, you know, Ratios means X over Y, one number divided by the other to give us more sense, but we'll talk about that later on. This is just an overview of the financial statement. The third category of the finance, of the balance sheet is the stockholders' equity. And frankly, I don't like this balance sheet because it doesn't show really what we need to show. Um, stockholders' equity is divided into the two main components of stockholders' equity. The two main components is one is called retained earnings and one is called capital contribution Th those are the two main sections in the retain the two main it doesn't mean they're the only one there could be many capital contribution is what the investors invested in the company here it's represented by common stock common stock which is it's in its negative that doesn't make any sense well the reason it's negative is because home depot they're taking cash and they're buying back their stock when you buy when you buy back more stock than what you issued they're buying back their own stock then you have a negative what we call common stock negative common stock that's very unusual matter of fact in accounting what we do is we have common stock and we have another account called treasury stock we don't net them out here they're netting them out it's a little bit unusual so don't this is not a typical presentation then the other section is retained earnings is what the company made in profit and kept over the years this is retained earning so notice here 
Here are the figures. We have negative 72.6 of capital contribution and positive 82.7 of retained earning. A little bit unusual uh, presentation, but okay, that's fine. Overall, it represents 10.1% of assets. Okay, so so we have retained earning and capital contribution. We have treasury stock, which which is not showing here. Treasury stock will be listed different separately, and it will be a negative number. Treasury stock will be a negative number, but we, you don't net it against common stock. That's fine. So the shares held by investors are said to be issued and outstanding. And here they're not giving us the number. Home Depot uh, par value is negative, which is it, again. It doesn't, you know, don't don't worry about this. It's a little bit an unusual presentation. The third financial statement is the statement of cash flows. And from a financial analytical perspective, it's the most important financial statement. Because remember, when we value a company, what we care about is cash flows. How much cash are they bringing in? So the income statement and the balance sheet are based on accrual method of accounting, which is, you know, you know, um, you know, Recognize revenue when earned, incur expenses when uh, record expenses when incurred. Okay, revenue recognized at the time of the sale, and if no cash has yet has not yet been exchanged, there is no revenue, and if no cash is paid, there is no no expense. The income statement. We're looking at like a small business. A small business look at everything from a cash transaction. So we're gonna take the business and turn it into cash transaction. We got paid, it's revenue. We paid the expense, it's an expense. Otherwise, it's not revenue and it's not an expense. Okay, so we forget about the accrual method when we prepare the statement of cash flows. It's by its by its name, cash flows. It means you are not using accrual, you're using cash method. For example, if goods are sold now with payment due in 60 days, the income statement will treat revenue. For example, if goods are sold now and we don't get paid until 60 days later, well, for accrual, we have we made the sale. For the cash flow, there's no sale until we get the cash. Okay? Same thing with expenses. When we incur an expense, it's not really an expense until we actually pay it. That's when it's an expense. And this is the most important of the three financial statements for financial statement analysis. And it's derived. I mean, for 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 a, for a finance students, this will be given to you. You need to understand it. But for an accounting students, and on my website, you know, forhatlectures.com, I show you how to prepare, how to build, because the accounting job is to build an actual cash flow statement. The cash flow statement is composed of three sections. The first one is operating the second one is investing and the third one is financing and i'm going to go even over each one of them as much as possible that that help you give you the big picture of this because again if i want to teach you this from an accounting perspective it will be much much longer to teach because you'll have to build it from zero so for the operating section the operating section basically think of of the income statement the income statement gives you net income Net income is an accrual figure. It's based on accounting number. It's based on gap, generally accepted accounting principle. What we do on the cash flow statement, we're going to take this accrual figure and turn it into net income cash basis. I, I made this word up just to kind of to make the point. So now you're going to convert net income accrual to net income cash basis. So basically convert your convert your income statement into a cash income statement so what how do you do that you will start with the income statement and this is the indirect method There's, there are two methods again you don't have to worry about this the one of the biggest adjustment that you make is you add depreciation because depreciation is a non cash when you deduct the depreciation you did not really pay any cash therefore when you convert your net income to cash you you add back depreciation Notice here you had a decrease, uh, you had actually an increase in account receivable. Your account receivable went up. When your account receivable went up, it means you are selling and you are not receiving money. You'll be receiving the money later. Therefore, you deduct that difference. You have a increase in inventory. When your inventory went up, it means you are buying and not selling. It's a negative. Now, re remember, if this is was if this was a decrease, it would have been the opposite. It would have been the opposite. It will be positive cash flow. Again, if you really want to learn about the cash flow, please go to my website because, you know, this is just a shortcut of things because as a finance major, you just need to understand how to read it. Increase in 
or decrease in, in liabilities. If you have an increase in liabilities, it's positive. So if you have any increase in liabilities, it's a positive cash flow. You might be asking why. Think about it. When your liabilities go up, you are not using your cash. You are using other people's money. Therefore, you are preserving your cash. Therefore, your cash flow will go up. That's why it's positive. There are other adjustments. We don't have to worry about this. All in all, notice here, notice here that from uh, from a uh, accrual perspective, you made 7.9 billion. From a cash perspective, you made 7.9 from a cash, 9.7 billion. So from a cash perspective, Home Depot is doing pretty well. And this is what you want. You want to be generating revenue and you want to be uh, collecting that revenue in cash because at the end of the day, what matters is cash. So this is the first component of the cash flow statement, which is cash provided. It happens to be provided. It means it's positive cash provided plus by operation. The second section is the cash flow from investing. Okay, I'm going to give you the overall idea here. What's the overall the idea of investing? What do you do? When you have a company, you're going to make investments. You're going to buy other bonds and stocks of other companies. That's one for that's one form of investments. Or you're going to buy property, plant and equipment and vehicles and warehouses to invest in yourself. This is what goes here. For example, Home Depot Gross investment in tangible fixed asset is negative 1.6 billion. What does that mean? It means Home Depot purchased property, plant, and equipment, usually warehouses and stores to expand. Okay, it's negative. Investment in other assets, it seems positive. Now, I don't know what this investment in other assets, maybe they had stocks and bonds of other companies and they sold them and as a result, they received cash. So this is what goes in here. But notice from investment, it's used. It's not provided. So they have a negative 1.5 billion. It means they used up some of their cash to, to, to expand the company. You want this number to be negative. You want the operating to be positive. You want this to be negative. It means you are expanding because you want to keep on expanding the company. Assuming you have projects that will earn you more than your required rate of return. Okay. Now the third category is cash either used or provided by financing. So the third section is financing activities. How do you finance yourself? Well, you finance yourself through that, through your own borrowing, or you finance yourself through stocks, selling your own stocks or paying dividend or paying interest, so on and so forth. So here what we have is, let's look at the overall. Overall, we have cash used. Notice it's, it's a negative. It means they paid 7.8 billion. They paid, they consumed of cash 7.8 billion. Now, how did they consume this cash? Well, addition to long-term debt. It, they, it seems they borrowed 2.2 billion in debt. Net issue or repurchase of shares. Here's a big one. Home Depot is buying back their shares. Home Depot is taking their cash and they're buying back their shares. Now, why would they buy back their shares? Because they, they have confidence in the company. They want to reward the shareholders. They buy back the shares. Because when they buy back the shares, the price usually go up. Therefore, notice 6.6 .6 billion of their cash is spent on buying back their own shares, which is a huge commitment, a huge commitment. Now, also, they paid dividend. They paid dividend of 3.4 billion. So notice between, between paying dividend, between paying dividend and buying back their own stocks, they consumed all the cash that they generated from their stores. Actually, they have more. Here, they have almost 10 billion, 10 billion. Okay, and the cash that they generated from the stores is 9.7. Hold on a second. And how did they also consume or they spent 1.5 billion on expanding? They borrowed money. They borrowed 2.2 billion. Then there's other, don't worry about other. It's a small amount. So what's happening to Home Depot is this. Home Depot is considered what we called a mature company. What do you mean by mature company? Mature company makes money from operating their business and they're mature they can no longer expand that much so they have this they are still expanding but not, not that much but what they do the money that they generate from the business they either buy back their stock or they pay dividend notice what's happening here this is considered a mature company in other words they're in good shape now a startup company what would the startup company would look like a startup company they might have a startup company. They might have a negative operating. They may, they may not be making money from operating the business because they're still up like early Amazon, early Netflix. They don't make money. Then they have a large negative here for investing, but they will have a big positive under financing. So what they do, startup companies, they borrow money, they issue stocks to finance, to, to invest in the company, 
and to make up for the losses. After a while, what happened is this. Once the company, it's, it's, it, and, and, it's in its midlife, they will start to make money from operation. They would still be expanding the company and they will start to have a small negative financing. Once they mature, they would still be making money. Now they, they'll make more money. The investing will slow down because they can no longer have enough project and the financing will be a big minus because now they're gonna take, take the money and reward the investors, uh, pay back their debt because they have enough money but here's what's happening with home depot they're borrowing money because interest rate is very low they feel it's better to borrow money okay to pay back the shareholders to buy back the stock and pay pay off pay the shareholders they believe it's worth it for them because obviously interest rate is low so this is an overview of the three major financial statements at the end of this recording i'm going to invite you to visit my website farhatlectures.com whether you are a cpa candidate or an accounting student if you are a cpa candidate this is an investment in your career and the cpa is a one it's a once in a lifetime it will serve you 20 to 30 years do not under don't under change yourself and say well it's i'm not gonna pay you know a small amount of money to pass to pass the exam this is a small amount of an investment in your overall career study hard it's it's a great value for your money stay safe most importantly because covid numbers are keep on going higher you know october 27 2020 i don't know when you're when you're going to be watching this recording hopefully it will you know slow down and uh, stay safe most importantly